you're doing this kind of checks. And that's my question. Is there is it written somewhere that the entrance has to be handed to the attorney general? The whole thing. There's no I don't understand the special. I don't understand the special treatment for this fund where the entrance. Back row. My suggestion is, if the ARPA funds are the ones that's making the interest, the interest needs to go back into the ARPA account. That account has that much money in it, and the more money you put in it, the more interest you're going to gain on that account instead of shoving that money in some other place. So if it's an ARPA account and it's separate and it's gaining the interest, then the interest needs to go in that account, and then she needs to do if if Beth presents her with claims or bills out of the ARPA funds, then she needs to transfer that money to where Beth needs it to write the check. But the ARPA money needs to stay separate because transparency is very important. Yes. I agree. The, no other funds, though. There are All the other funds don't get to accrue their interest. It doesn't make, this is a special circumstance from COVID, so hopefully this won't Never happen again. <laughs> Your other funds have been there for years and years and years. So I will make the necessary transfer. So you want me to leave the interest in there that's accumulated? In, I mean, right now it's, it's earning the interest that it's been credited is just last month, 12575 How much? That was $12,575, but that was on $4 million when there was really only three. Because Are you saying we might get more interest if you combine the two? No. 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 That is excellent. I'll just, why can't you transfer the interest? You can't. Is there anybody here that would not like to see the interest remain in that account? There's no, I mean, it's, it's, it's irrelevant. I mean, it, 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 it cleans it up. It's not irrelevant. It just is a clean trail. It's an accounting. Well, that $3 million, $3 million, 86,000 includes the interest. So. It's less clean. So if the interest if, wasn't there, if you're putting the interest into this account, less. it's a moving target. When I put the interest in, I put it in the so, 8950 just right. like you do. Yeah. You're gonna, so right. what I would like then is, is if I, I really would like something from the auditor's office so that I don't have to go through every check and see what funds it's on. This claim docket that Jeff signed were all ARPA. It was highlighted and everything. So you should be able to just take this and or your check register and move the money. I've done them separately since that we talked. I've done them okay. separately. We'll do separate claim docket. They, they made it, I mean, the, the federal ruling says that we can put, it is, it, it is acceptable to put the money <coughs> into county general. If we continue to put it in the number is always the best. That's my point. So this month it's three million eighty six thousand. Next month it's three million ninety six thousand. So then we got to meet again and say, oh, we got nine thousand dollars. We got to figure out what we're going to do with. It. And just roll it into county eventually, general. Eventually, it's going to wind its way down. But in the meantime, it's making more money for plans and, for, and items that county general we may not budget may want want to do. So it's all our, the same thing. And I, 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 I haven't spent any since then. So that would be the. Final thing. But if we put it in the county general, is there another way to spend it to have an additional line item? Do we have to do additional out of the county general, which would yeah. generally would not hurt our budget on the year? And that's what I'm saying. Once you put it in there, the only way you're going to get it out is you're going to additional out. And, we don't well, and it's the same thing. Yeah, we, we don't do that here. We don't like to do that. It's just going to be left in here with all your other I mean, it's the same thing. It's just where the money's coming. You know, you put it in here, then you forget what it is. Exactly. It'll be a loss. And I think it's ARPA's money, so the funds made on the ARPA funds need to stay with ARPA. And in the end, if we can do an extra project or something, then we do the extra project. You're, you're worried about the fluctuating amount, but once you start spending it all, it's going to be gone within months. Mm -hmm. Well, currently, well, it's earning right. around uh, $10,000 a month. There you go. So, I mean, if, if, that, a year, maybe. if we don't spend any of that money over the next 90 yes. days because you're wanting to keep your liquidity liquidity mm -hmm. as high as you can, then in another three months, they'll have another $30,000, and that'll probably fund somebody's project. Yeah. So, so I can do it. Answer. Okay. I, <laughs> I was hoping.
wish you'd go the other way, but I can do it. I recommend you the words that you want to draw us interest and use that interest for our group. I would. Thank you. I have that. Yeah, I got that. Okay. Um, I'm Jane Smith, a superintendent. I know I've talked to the council, and this is my first time in front of the commissioner, so the superintendent of Carol Mayer. Um, thank you all for your time and consideration regarding our funds. Um, Carol Mayer, as you can tell from the um, well, I don't know if I should, so they can see what I should do. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, see that our year end numbers. Now, Carol Manor is run strictly from when we've been self sustaining since I believe it was 2010, 2012. Um, that money, that two hundred sixty-eight thousand fifty-nine and seventy-three cents, um, was built up from revenue received by the residents that live there. Um, you can see it fluctuate a little bit from 2017 to 2019, 2017 to 2019, excuse me. Um, and then once the pandemic hit and Carol Mayor was closed and they could not allow people to come in um, and tour the place, uh, get people from other facilities, you know due to spreading uh, COVID-19, they really took a hit, the increase in the groceries and the increase in just the cost of everything, utility prices and all that. I mean, they had to spend that money that was built up into Carol Mayer's fund to pay the bills to keep the place going. Um, there were a lot of things in the building that were let go because they had to use that money um, to buy food and pay the utilities. So I have to put together a list of things that were just left, you know, um, at the building. And it's a 150-year-old building, so a lot of things um, need taken care of. Um, our biggest thing that I worry about is not having a generator out of Carol Mayer for the Woods Tower. We have 14 residents there. Um, we have some people in oxygen. We need to make sure that that place is taken care of. I did um, get a bid from Houston. Um, electric, um, they were able to come out the same day I called them and asked them. They were out there within two hours um, and had me quote, quote within two days um, actually for a natural gas permanent installation, putting the pad down, everything, two year warranty um, generator for $140,000. Um, the, their bid, um, their quote includes everything except for the freight. It's good, it's good for 30 days um, from February 16th, which is the day that the email be closed. Um, it would run everything, including the elevator um, out there. So within you know 30 seconds, hopefully everything would, would start to be powered and it would include everything but taxes and freight. And you know, this past 30 days, of course, it's going to change. The quote's going to change again. So I am requesting 140,000 for the generator. Um, 
am also um, requesting $50,000 um, to go towards an assistant salary. This is including $10,000 for the health insurance and including um, for the retirement pay, but this is based off of the $38,084 annual salary, not the salary that included the, the raise for 2023. Um, but you know, if, you, if that gets approved, that's only for one year. So I know. Our but, will be gone. And, and I get that. This is to, right now, I'm doing it alone. Yes, I signed up for this. It is very hard to not work overtime with. Uh, we have don't even have half of the staff to run a 24-hour facility. So while I am trying to keep up with the weekly, monthly reports and coming to meetings, there's no one in that office to, you know, handle all the stuff. So I need that person to either help with the staff where they can handle filling in shifts or helping with job interviews or yes, with interviews for employees so that I can come to the meetings and so I can get my reports done. I just need that person, I guess, to help for right now. And I've asked some of the people on the floor that I trust that maybe could come in there at the $13 an hour rate and nobody is willing to take on that, that kind of responsibility or stress of you know doing this, but <coughs> they can't be out promoting and be there and then be here at the meeting. So I'm just needing that help now and then I can you know, we'll get that census back up and we'll, we're on our own. We'll start building that fund back up as long as I have the help at work. Um, I'm also requesting $100,000 to fix all the plumbing at Carroll Manor just since I've been there on November 30th. Um, as a matter of fact, right before I came here, we have a toilet clogging up right now. We have sinks that are backing up, we have rusted pipes. Um, we've had to close off drains and replace the PVC pipe. I mean, things have just been fixed with a band-aid over the years. I've been through that basement and things. It's just fix what we can for now for the cheapest amount possible just to keep it running. And that's not making it better for anyone. Um, I'm still waiting to hear back on some quotes from different people when I started calling them. They've got a backlog, you know, they've got a list of people that um, they have to go do quotes for, so as soon as I get those, I'll be able to have those exact numbers. Um, I'm also requesting $200,000 to get all the electric up to code. I've had Raycom, I've walked out there with Raycom all over that building, and it's just, it's almost overwhelming the electrical and what's been done with the old electrical, what's been done since 2007 when they put in the elevator and they have the new panels up and all that stuff. and it's got the knob and tube that's upstairs, and it's taking Raycom. It's going to take them a while to go through all of that and follow, follow where all the electric goes to get us a, an exact number for that, but it's going to be pricey. Um, I'm also requesting $60,000 for a kitchen remodel. We have cabinets that are broken, falling apart. The floor is falling apart underneath our dish machine that we lease. Um, for U.S. Foods. Um, I think that it should have been fixed when they put the new machine in there. Um, we have leaky sinks, there's rust. It's just they squeal when you turn on the faucets out in the kitchen and it's just not, not feasible to continue using it like that. And um, we have six bath or one, yes, six bathrooms, five for the residents, I mean, um, three upstairs, two downstairs. Martha did have one remodeled. Um, Dwayne Flora, or Flora Arian, uh, did that one bathroom remodel and added some extra stalls in there and sinks um, for between $25,000 and $27,000. I would like to do the other bathrooms the same way. Add the stalls. Not everybody can have a private bathroom in their room, but at least if we have enough stalls that you know, they can use them. We have the showers downstairs and they're working fine. Um, I have closed off one shower upstairs because the drain, that's the one that had drain problems and it was leaking and just smelled. So we closed that off for now, but I would like to, to make that shower functional again upstairs or functioning. Um, I guess that's it for right now. Do you have any questions? Um, 
Anybody have any questions for her? What was your bathroom thing? Um, for Arian, uh, remodeled one upstairs bathroom, which was $25,000 and $27,000, and that was in 2019, which I know lots of things have went up. So I'm still waiting to get that uh, close. Giving us a big uh, <coughs> something to think about here. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So, do you have something to present to us? No. Let's go back to the next row. Mr. Dillon. Yeah. The chief's just here to first responder. Back up. This is our emergency management track. I have not addressed uh, the council or the commissioners before on what any of the projects that I was looking at, uh, just because I wasn't sure what kind of money was out there. But, uh, along with the fact that getting the quotes from some of our vendors take quite a bit of time. Uh, every time I get up and talk to you guys, I always talk about communications. And technology is always changing, and it's moving. And it's going uh, when we did the uh, when I got here in 2018, we did the tower, the B25 tower to upgrade to get better signal for all the first responders. And when we were able to do that, we were able to upgrade the sheriff's department's radios to where they are what is called TDMA compliant. <clears throat> what TDMA is is a, it's called a time division multiple access. Real quick. Down and dirty. What it does is it allows multiple users to split a circuit on there. So right now we got four channels. When TDMA comes in, we'll have eight. Majority of the fire departments and the other police departments and the sheriff's mobile radios are not TDMA compliant. So what does that mean? Is in 2027, F6 goal who is in charge of the radio communications for the state. Instead of having eight channels, if they're not TDMA compliant, we'll have four. So anytime that non-TDMA com compliant radio keys up, it takes two circuits, if that makes sense to you. Um, so the fire departments, uh, we've got EMS pretty much up to date. I think Doug only has two more mobiles that we gotta get done and we can get that done in his normal rotation. Uh, I'm up to date. The coroner's pretty much up to date. Sheriff's Department's mobiles need to get upgraded. Fire Department's. And most of the local police departments. Now they are investing themselves in this as well. They're buying as much as they can. Um, so when I first went out to him, I said, overall, give me what you got. I need to know what you need to be completely compliant in the next four years. Well, those quotes started coming in at seven, eight, nine hundred thousand dollars. So I knew that wasn't going to happen. So I started scaling back. Uh, in an agreement with the chiefs in that, what I'm looking at doing is five mobiles, which will come out to about just shy of $20,000 and 72 portable radios with the mics. And that'll be right around $248,000. So you have $20,000 on five mobiles right. and 72 what? 72 portable, which is a, the carry. You can't have carry How much was that on the 72? Uh, 247, 32. You round it up, total between the two, you're looking at $267,000. That's your request? That's my request. 60, how much did you say? Second. What was the last number you said? 200, I rounded it to 267. And in and return with that, the, the other departments are continuing to invest to bring them all up. So you said that was just sheriff and fire department? Sheriff's fire departments and the other police departments. So Flora, Kim, and, and Delta. Shouldn't those municipality 
they're, they're working on it. Okay. They, they're investing. It's just it's an expensive defense. Right. To give you an example, Cass County just did the same program to bring everybody up, <coughs> and it was $2 million. But they did everybody. And what we're doing is I scout it back, and the fire departments are getting like 10 portables themselves. They're not getting any of their models. And the investments that the fire departments and the police departments have already made, along with the sheriff's department, we're set at about 38% to you make it work. Well, they, they are budgeting, but they are expensive. Thank you. So it's a way to help them out. In the, they also got ARPA money themselves, didn't they? Like right. Well, uh, Florida did, and they up, that's, that's how they did some of their upgrades on the fire department. And now they did some of their upgrades on the police department. Now, if I did the, I think they invested in fiber for the city. I'm not going to answer for the municipalities because I don't know exactly what they spent their money on. <clears throat> There were some good questions about um, whether local agencies should be funding the radio upgrades and whether or not they get therapy money. So obviously some of the municipalities have. As it relates to the fire departments, um, Burroughs, Rockfield, Cutler, and Delta <coughs> do not get or have not gotten any ARP money. So Delphi Fire Department is a territory, so it's representing three townships encompass the area and, um, and the city, but we're a separate agency and don't have access to the city's funds. So I just wanted to clarify that because I thought those were all good questions. So um, first, I feel like this is uh, about the closest I'll ever come to being on Shark Tank. So uh, with that in mind, um, Director Fincher's request is just under only 6% of the total ARP money that the county's received. So, um, out of the 393 million, which is now up to four, whatever, that's good. Um, he's only asking for the $267,000. From a fire standpoint, that would give us 10 radios per fire department, is the way we have it broke down. Um, the, uh, I know a lot of the money is already allocated or dedicated to other projects, but, um, but for the money that remains, I can guarantee that 100% of the funds fund this project will go to supporting the citizens that live and work in Carroll County their safety and especially the safety of the firefighters and police officers that are uh, relied upon to provide the service to them. Um, the million dollar word when it comes to grant funding or any funding for communication or any public safety project is interoperability. Interoperability means well, what we're buying you work with existing equipment or with other agencies that support the used equipment. And right now, the radios that we have are not interoperable. We all have interoperable radios to do the job, but we also have radios within all of our departments that do not communicate with the equipment that we currently have. So, uh, <coughs> just a real quick example, this is a fire radio from Rockfield. Delphi <coughs> is the same ones, they're old. Burroughs has VHF radios, so it's on fire ground one. Okay, normal channel could be sent to your house because it's on fire. So you could do me a favor and be at Rockfield Fire Department. Okay. And you've heard me speak a couple of years ago when we were fighting to get automatic mutual aid in place in Carroll County, which means if your house is on fire, 
two closest fire departments are coming to you instead of the one closest fire department because we all have manpower shortages. People are at work and they're all volunteer departments. So in this situation, Rockfield and Delphi are automatic mutual aid partners, which means we respond to every house fire together. Their firefighters and our firefighters go to every house fire that we have together. So if it's my job in Delphi, it's Can you I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't think I heard you right. Every volunteer fire department responds to every fire? No, no. no. Okay. 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 I'm sorry. Sorry. So, <laughs> so we have, based on map, the two closest departments will okay. always be sent. So Rockfield and Delphi are very regularly the two closest departments for each other. So it might be Delphi's responsibility to bring the trucks and the water, okay? And it's Rockfield's job to use our stuff, go inside because they're closer, they're ready, they're waiting at the door for us to get there, take the hose and put the fire out, okay? So I'm gonna pump the truck, <coughs> you're gonna drag the hose to the attic of the two-story house, and when you need water because it's getting really hot, you call and tell me, turn the water on. All right, so pick up your radio. We're both on fire ground one. And tell me, send the water. Send the water. Okay, did everybody hear that? Oh, yeah. All right, try it one more time real quick. Send the water. Now, it doesn't matter how loud you yell or how hard you push that button. These two radios will never be able to talk to each other. And that's the current situation that we have on all seven of the fire departments in Carroll County. Over the last three years, Carroll County Fire Departments have responded to over 800 calls for service. Out of those 800 times, several hundred of them are mutual aid calls. All 800 of them are emergencies for somebody, right? That's why they call 911, that's why they show up. So we're sending our firemen into a very dangerous situation. If, you're, if you can't call for water, how do you call for help, right? something bad's happened, you can't even call the other firefighters on the scene for help. So what do you do? So we have to send two firefighters together. You know, we have to we have to hold up what we're doing and partner a Rockfield guy with a Delphi guy. We've had the same situation where we have our ladder set up and we call for manpower and we'll send people up from floor up to tell us where to go, like we'll control the truck. But we have to send another guy up there or give a guy two radios when you're trying to focus on something to listen. So that's what we're asking for is upgrades so we can at least talk to each other, especially in emergencies. Can you help me out? I need just a little bit of context. Um, and I think you touched on this earlier, but I, I, I'm just trying to get my head wrapped around it. So Delphi City does not have anything to do with the Delphi Fire Department, correct? There's there's four entities, correct. There's four entities that makes up our territory, the three township trustees and the city of Delphi. The city of Delphi is our um, financial, like our financial person. So all our money goes through there, but our funds are completely separate based on the contribution. So you're support, so I mean, you, I'm gonna say you, but Delphi, Delphi Fire is supported by three townships and the city of Delphi. Right, and it's a territory. Okay, and then Rockfield is supported by who? Rock Creek Township. Rock Creek Township. And, and then Burroughs is supported by Liberty Township. Right. Cutler is Democrat Township. Okay, gotcha. Just making sure. Right. So, I think the only one that's got the most money to come in from the three. Right, yep. So, uh, each township supports the fire. One of the individually. Right. So, um, one of the things that came up during questions is if we know that these problems are upcoming, we know that the stuff that we have is becoming outdated, shouldn't we do something leading up to that to prepare? And I totally agree. Um, we're not ignoring the magnitude of this problem um, while just waiting for some government handouts. Um, we're doing everything we can with the money we have. Um, Delphi, every department in this county has bought hand-me-down radios that they don't even make parts for because we're trying to replace those that can't talk to us knowing that in four years they won't work because the system upgrade. But at least for the next four years, we can talk to each other. Um, we applied for grants 
Over the last three years combined, the departments in Carroll County have spent over $140,000 of their own budget money on communication upgrades. And like Director Fincher said, we're not quite to 50% of that replacement. Uh, the funding requested uh, presented by Director Fincher will get us much closer to our goal. Additionally, on behalf of the seven departments, um, the fire departments will commit to spending an additional $100,000 towards the project out of their own funds over the course of the next three years, just like we've done the prior three years. We can commit to that. So um, I haven't been involved in the presentations, and obviously some haven't gone yet, but I'm guessing nobody else that's requesting funding has proposed a project that can positively impact more people's safety or has committed more of their own money in conjunction with the ARP money that we're asking. <clears throat> we're not just asking for the money to say that we didn't think about this ahead of time or things have gotten so bad and now we have to continue to pay money to build up to where we need to be. We then when we have the funding available to us to get to the point we are, we're asking for help to get us over the hill. And again, we've committed to continue spending our own money to finish that program out. So again, I think this is important for all of the people that volunteer to help everybody out in the county when they need that the worst not happen. So, so just you. to make it clear that the, the money, the 200 and 68,000 would not be money that is going to update that in four years is not going to no, be it, it, that, you, This update will switch over in four years. The, quote, yes. the quotes that um, we have for the radio proposal for the Sheriff's Department's mobile radios and for the 70 firefighter radios, those things will last for 15 years. Um, the technology sure that the radios, the, the they're the state of the art, they're what the state is recommending and the requirements mm -hmm. or the functionality that the state requires. Okay. just want to make sure that we weren't updating something that in four years was not. No, not in, in the state, in our conversations with EBSIC as well, they won't let us buy any radios that aren't TV and make them fly in any way. Gotcha. Thank you, Mr. Dillon. Who's next who would like to present? I want to follow that one. Sheriff's <laughs> 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 uh, Department is talking that way as well. Um, I was a I'm a little behind the with the times. I wasn't clear that this was going to be happening. I got a hold of Tracy Friday, maybe. Uh, so there are a lot of things that we need funded as well. One of the one of the bigger things. There's three big things. We need body cameras. I don't have a quote for you. That's like a hundred thousand dollars. Uh, we need vests. Our vests expire this year. We need approximately 20 vests, bulletproof vests, and they range from $1,000, $1,100. They vary. I don't have quotes for that. Um, I went through and did a inventory of all the computers at the sheriff's department and our cars in the jail. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They're over 10 years old. And actually, three of those don't work. Uh, that's just laptops uh, that the guys attempt to use that don't work very good. Uh, there are one, two, three, there are eight that I think are five to eight years. I, I don't know the actual how old they are, but at least five years. Eight. And then there's some desktops. Again, I don't know those. I don't know their ages. Uh, one of them in our squad room. We have two in our squad room. One of them doesn't function at all. Um, I would. What my goal is, the best are important are going to have to be done this year. Body cameras we need to work on. Computers we really need. Now, I mean, this is this is the guy's office. This is what they work on. This is what they do everything in their vehicles for. I would like to replace those at least 10-year-old 
computers and then start putting those into my budget when I when we get three cars a year add the cost of a computer into that budget so we can just replace them and, and if there are things that they're still good they could come to the courthouse after you know people could still potentially use them but we need to keep our stuff running we need to be up to speed so do, you, do you know what one of those costs uh, I looked are you talking about to replace a laptop is mm -hmm. what you're asking I looked at one that's a police it's called a rugged and it's roughly twenty seven hundred dollars and you got eight of those Seven. Seven. And then another eight to the that ten are, years. That are ten years old that I know. And then it's eight in that five to eight range. Yes. How are the bills paid for in previous years? I assume through the budget. That there is a grant. There is a grant that pays half. So if if we if I need twenty vests and they're a thousand dollars a piece, it'll cost us ten thousand if I get the grant. You said those are up. Those are those are going out this year or this year. So, so the vests are 1100. Is that what you said? I'm sorry. Uh, the vests are 1100. Approximately. So is that like is that something that you would budget for this year to get them replaced next year, or it should have been budgeted for this year? Should have been for this year. But it was not. No. I did a quote uh, for Toe three years ago, and we, we looked at two different companies, and, and it, it was good stuff. It was all the bells and whistles, and it was $100,000. And then I don't remember, there's upkeep, there's upkeep to that. Is, it, is that not on site or off site storage? Off site. And so that's, that's just a guess on how much storage you would have. No, that was, the storage was included. But then there's a, and I don't remember the exact number, but ongoing every year, uh -huh. there is a, there is a fee uh -huh. as well. well. That was three years ago. You can double that amount. <laughs> yeah. Now. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know if double, but I, I just want to put that out there as, as things that we need. About how many body cams would that be? Uh, that would be one for every, every deputy and every jailer. So 18-ish was what the quote was for. 18. No, I, we've so had so conversations, four not since I've been, I've been sheriff, it. but I think he would be on board with that. But again, I think he's got other sure. things happening right now. Yeah. I don't know what that would be. No, I just thought it was crazy. I mean, if, it, if they have body cams, then it's FOIA requestable. So that would be, it's just interesting. I didn't know that was possible. That jailers could wear body cams. Mm -hmm. Or, I mean, you see what I'm saying? It's, I, I just, sorry, that was a rabbit hole. I just didn't know. Apologies. <laughs> 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 what? It's a, it's a great thing for to fight against liability issues. Did you guys, I made, 